President Biden is set to cut his overseas travel short uh, following this week's G7 summit in Japan. The White House announcing Tuesday planned stops in Australia and Papua New Guinea. They're now canceled, so the president can return home to get back to negotiations with congressional leaders over the debt ceiling. The move coming as the U.S. tries to reaffirm its ties with Pacific nations as tensions rise with China. Here to weigh in, Gordon Chang, columnist, lawyer, and author of The Coming Collapse of China. Gordon, I, I, sit, I sit there and I read that title, and I think a lot of people at home would say that China is among one of the most powerful nations on the planet, one of the most feared, especially if you're in Taiwan right now. Uh, how is it, how will there be a coming collapse? I just have to ask that about your book. We are seeing inside of China simultaneous crises that the uh, Xi Jinping, the ruler, can't deal with. You have plunging property prices, um, continuing debt defaults, a stagnating economy, worsening food shortages, deteriorating environment, failing local governments. And we're seeing surging numbers of Chinese come into the United States through our southern border, up 920% uh, in the Rio Grande Valley, according to Customs and Border Protection. According to the Panamanian numbers, which are actually more accurate, it's a couple thousand percent increase this wow. year. And that shows you the Chinese people want out of their country. That's not a strong country. It's one that looks mighty, but in the inside, it's got problems that it cannot deal with. Yeah, house divided cannot stand. Uh, of course, this talk of the president going to the G7 summit in Japan, catching a lot of flack uh, because of the ongoing debt ceiling debates here with House leaders. Was it right for him to go? And now that he's going and cutting his trip short, is that a nice concession for the American people? Um, this is a debacle for the United States, one of the most severe setbacks for American foreign policy this century. China, um, with some very aggressive policy, was taking over the Pacific. And really what we have here is the United States, even if it works hard, is going to take years to overcome this. Um, so this was wrong on all counts. The president, I think, should have continued with his trip um, because really right now there is a contest. And we've handed China a very, very big win. So, yeah, the president could have engaged in debt negotiations. There are things called telephones, Adrian. And, you know, I think the Biden administration could have used it. <laughs> so you think that he should have stayed here, dealt with the budget, dealt with the debt ceiling, and just had a phone call with China? Or not with China, forgive me, with Japan in the G7? Or no, no the other the way opposite. around? He should, have, he should, of course, continue going on to Papua New Guinea and to uh, Canberra especially in Papua New Guinea, which is hotly contested right now. Um, you know, they actually declared a national holiday for President Biden's visit, the first ever presidential visit to that country. Mm. And now we are going to have to deal with that fallout. Um, you know, the debt negotiations, they could have done that by phone, especially since the progress that was made yesterday in the meeting with uh, congressional leaders. So um, China is going to field day with this. And, you know, it is like a number of other decisions American presidents have made this century. It took years to undo the damage. This falls into that category. One more question. We don't have a lot of time, so I need a short answer from you, Gordon, which I know you can give me. In terms of business with China, I mean, at one time, you just couldn't do business without doing business with China. But now you're saying that CEOs and companies are kind of pulling out in terms of their presence there or maybe not visiting as often because of the current politics and the current situation there? Yeah, uh, the regime really is cutting the links with foreign business. It's also doing the same thing with domestic private entrepreneurs. It is closing itself off and American business and businesses of other countries have decided they've got to lessen their vulnerability to Beijing. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.